Throughout the decades, motorcycle development has witnessed numerous innovations. Telescopic forks, exit valves, desmodromics and monoshock suspension being landmark examples. Sometimes these inventions transcend the original manufacturer and define the entire model range. Norton's feather bed frame bikes achieve this legendary status. For Motor Gutsy, it's the Tonti bikes that have a collective mystique. From the 1970s, the V7 Sport. Through the 1980s, the Mark II Le Mans. And into the 1990s, the Thousand S. By the uh, end of the 1960s, their flagship V7 was starting to show its age. Tonti was brought in to redesign the entire model range. The big V-twin engine still had much more to give. But the tall loop frame was the limiting factor. What the Mandalu factory really needed was a new sporting model to take them forward into the 1970s and revitalise their racing programme. The first task was to move the giant alternator from between the cylinders yeah, The V7 engine was designed with the generator between the cylinders and it was a high output generator for police forces so they could run all their extra lights and radios and all the rest of it by basically moving that generator and putting it directly on the end of the crankshaft this allowed him to lift the engine in the frame and make a frame with rails that ran down the centre between the two cylinders. The frame then was a completely new design from the, the old loop frame. So let's take a closer look at Lino Tonti's masterpiece. At the headstock, the frame tubes are heavily plated together. A large diameter central spine tube meets the frame rails halfway along. Those rails pick up the shock mounts and continue to the seat pivot. The rear section features a large stiff triangulation and supports the swinging arm pivots. The lower frame rails are detachable, allowing the engine to be removed. The big block motor is a very snug fit inside its tubular cage resulting with fantastic high-speed stability and rail-like cornering prowess. The initial batch of Tonti Ferry bikes were 150 red frame specials. The Telio Rosso machines had chrome alloy frames and were assembled for racing homologation purposes. At the 1971 Monza 500km race, an outstanding third place was achieved. Later that year at Le Mans, an 850cc version led much of the 24-hour race, finishing fourth overall. The 1976 850 Le Mans model owes its name to that earlier success. The V7 Sport certainly rebooted gutsy racing, but it was the Le Mans that became the production racer of the late 1970s. Roy Armstrong and Richard Gamble being notable exponents in the Avon Tyre series. Into the 1980s, Ian Cobby literally flew the Tonti flag in Battle of the Twins. Meanwhile, across the pond, Dr John Whitner's Le Mans 1000 was also winning in endurance racing. Ironically, it was the success of Dr John's own spine frame racer that prompted Mandelo to drop the Tonti frame from production altogether. Whitner's spine frame with monoshock met Guzzi's new four-valve engine. From that transatlantic marriage, a new family of machines came forth. The Mark III Le Mans featured the restyled square barrel engine, bored out to 948cc for the Mark IV. This final Mark V edition retains the swoopy styling of the de Tomaso era. Tonti Taurus first appeared as the simple but effective T-Range, 
superseded by the excellent fully fared Sparta machines. The Sparta 3 promised much, but was ultimately a miserable failure. My first encounter with the brand was actually in 1980 at Brands Hatch, where my dad's bait rocked up on a T3 Cali. That bike left a lasting impression on my 40 year old brain. The California was known to be one of the best handling cruisers available, its taunty underpinnings giving it the edge over the competition. The Cali Vintage being the final machines to leave Mandalo, featuring the Tonti frame. In my later teens, I discovered the Mark 1 Le Mans. It's that bike that really fired my imagination. However, at the 1989 International Motorcycle Show, Motor Gutsy unveiled the 1000S. With 750S styling and relative modernity in propulsion, it was the perfect blend of old and new. It was a surprising sales flop at the time, but has become recently a desirable model. However, some Tontis didn't sell well for good reason. Progress at Moto Guzzi is notoriously glacial. Lino Tonti's arrival sped up the lethargic giant. His engineering brilliance brought them back to the forefront of motorcycle design. Although the big block Tonti frame bikes are now Italian heritage, his small block design remains in production to this day. Whatever went before or came after, those that know Moto Guzzi appreciate the outstanding era of the Tonti.